Give me Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. We're going to start there because there's a message that we need to teach our people. For too long our people have been too comfortable in the midst of their sin, in the midst of their folly, in the midst of foolishness. So we are here to teach a message to the black, Hispanic, Native American man, woman, and child. Read. The book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. Read. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent. Christ said what? Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Bible says that the Israelite man, woman, and child need to repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As you see right at this very moment, the kingdom of heaven is being established upon the face of the earth. That's what's being established. Read it again. The book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent. Hey, my man with the uh, jean jacket on. Hey, come talk to me real quick, bro. Real quick, man. You not even post. I right, read it again. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, "Repent, read. for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." Luke seventeen and twenty. Right? Why is it important that the Israelite repent? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What you see before you is men who are standing up for their community and for their people who have put their hands to the plow to build the kingdom of heaven. Read what you got. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 20. And when he was demanding of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the children of Israel in rulership upon the face of the earth. Not in subjugation, not in slavery, not uh, subject to people who the Bible calls dogs and then saying that you are free or having a job and thinking that you are free, but rulership over the entire planet Earth and the universe. That is the kingdom of heaven. Bring Read it, it again. And when he was demanding of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. So the kingdom of heaven, black man and black woman, is not gonna come sitting on your tail at home watching football on Saturday and just believing in Jesus. That's right. That's not what it says. You have to do something. Everyone believes in revolution, but nobody wants to do the hard work that it takes for revolution to take place. That's right. Most people would rather just kind of watch on the sidelines and kind of be lukewarm and, and say things like, I like what y'all brothers is doing, that's good, but they don't want to get into the fight. Except for when a side wins. Then people want to choose sides. Right. But you can't sit up here and stand on the sidelines and then pick the winning side. No choice is a choice. Read it again. Sister, brother, come talk to me real quick. You ain't got nothing better to do on a Saturday morning than to hear the words of the living God. That's Read. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 20. Read. And when he was demanding of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God shall come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. You're not going to get the kingdom of heaven just going on about your regular daily lives. Just just being sleep. Read. And being docile. Read. Neither shall they say, lo here. Brother, you hear that? The Bible says the kingdom of heaven is not going to come just because people say, look, the kingdom's coming. That's not how it's going to happen. Action has to be taking place. Read. Neither shall they say, lo here Read. or lo there. Read. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. You hear that, brother and sister? The Bible says the kingdom of heaven is within you, meaning you have to do something to bring forth the kingdom. We are, do we not all want to go to the kingdom of heaven? Yes or no? See, our people are sick out of their mind, man. Is they, give me that in uh, Ecclesiastes 7. Is it Ecclesiastes 7? Yeah, give me that. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. I'm going to show y'all what's wrong with our people, right? Our people just going on about their business, buying and selling, breaking the Lord's Sabbath, Ignoring the prophets as the scriptures are coming out right. and we in the midst of prophecy. There are wars happening right now There are rumors of bigger wars happening right now. There's famine in the land food shortages Read but this is what's wrong with our people Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7 listen up brother before you go in the store read Surely oppression make a wise man mad. The Bible says that oppression is supposed to make a wise man mad. A wise man mad. Not a foolish man, but a wise man. Read. Surely oppression make a wise man mad. Read. And a gift destroyeth the heart. Read that part again. 
and a gift destroyeth the heart. The black man, Hispanic man, and a Hispanic woman have been rocked to sleep because we have taken gifts at the hands of our oppressors. Bring it up. That is the reason why we can sit up here in the midst of prophecy with a famine, food shortage, a pandemic, and wars happening around us, and we simply walk to and fro, ignoring the Bible, ignoring the prophets as they teach, ignoring the signs of the times that we're in, and we just good because the good old oppressor then gave us the the save a lot and the it's fashion metro and the abc store and the dollar tree and top china and hibbers and all of these foolish stores that we go into and break the law of sabbath instead of hear the word of god read it again did you listen what's your name bro what's your name sir i'm sorry marshall marshall nice to meet you my name is joseph marshall watch this you do you think your people are oppressed marshall yeah okay all praises that's good you are in better case than most of your people you understand? Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression make a wise man mad. The Bible says that oppression should make a wise man mad. So when you see that your people are living in the projects, when you see that your people are the only people that are, it's acceptable for us to sell dope to each other, when you see that your people are the only ones that are more likely to be a baby mother or baby father in prison rather than building families, when you see that your people are more likely to succeed being rappers and entertainers than politicians, doctors, lawyers, and things that, that the, the whole community esteems as valuable, that should piss you off. That should make you mad because that's a clear indication that you and your people are oppressed and that the people that are those dignitaries and things in your community are the oppressor. Make sense? Bring it. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad and a gift destroy of the heart and you know how oppression does not make a wise man mad or makes you a foolish man because you so busy accepting a gift accepting stimulus checks and i'm not saying it's evil to accept those things i'm not saying it's evil to go to the store and buy things but some of our people specifically entertainers and not just them but people in our communities they got it so good where they might have a good job or they don't think they're oppressed they can see us struggle and i'm all right i'm good that's that's them niggas over there but I made something for myself. I'm accepted by the white man. I'm accepted by the Chinese man. That's y'all niggas problem over there. Go fix that y'all self. You understand? The Bible says oppression makes a wise man mad, but a foolish man accepts a gift at the expense of his people suffering and dying. Do you understand? All right, so drop that. I'm going to show you something, right? So do you understand that according to the Bible, matter of fact, let me ask you this. What's your nationality? If you were to fill out a job application, both, both of y'all, what would you say is your ethnic race? I, ain't got one. I like that. I like that. You smart. See, I told you earlier that you are different than perhaps most of your people because most of our people wouldn't have said that answer. That I don't have one. What's your answer? African American. Where'd you learn that you was an African American? Who taught you that? The white man. Hey, Bow says right now. Give me that Deuteronomy twenty. I already know what you're going at. So, so, so. And, and I respect y'all, you know what I mean? Right. Because I, I know I know where I'm where I come from. Good. You know what I mean? Now what's the next step? At the end of the day, Psalm 94 and 16. I gotta make sure I'm going right, you know what I mean? What is right? What's right? Yeah. As long as uh, you as long as you try to make, make an effort or trying to do something better or better yourself or trying to help everybody else, that's what mostly is right, you know what I mean? Right. You gotta give it out sometimes. We're gonna get the biblical definition of what's right, because right and good is interchangeable, right? What's right is good and what's good is right. Fair enough? Fair enough. We're gonna find out what the Bible says. Because I asked you what was the next step. The next step is we got to keep the commandments of God, brother. One of those things you're doing yourself right now with a beard on your face. That's a commandment. So good that you're following that. But watch this. Read. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 12. Read. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, Read. and just, and good, what? and good. Or right. So keeping the commandments of God is like a man growing a beard on his face. Like not buying and selling on the Sabbath day, which is today. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown is the Lord's Sabbath. And in that day, you are not to be buying, you are not to be selling, you are not to be working, you are not to be cooking, you're not to be doing anything except praising the Lord that day. You can eat, you can eat cereal, you can eat sandwiches, you can eat salad, you can eat anything cold, cold pizza, cold chicken, whatever. Just don't cook it. Why? Because the Lord himself said it is a day of rest. That's what it is. So that's good. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that you're doing it now. I don't see anything in your hand. I do see you just went and bought something, and perhaps you didn't know. But now that you know, you can't do that anymore. You understand? Read it again. Wherefore, the law is holy, 
and the commandment holy Read. and just Read. and good. Now, I'm going to show you why that's important because who does God care about on the planet? Why is it important that we keep the commandments of God? What is the penalty of it? And what is the benefit of it? Uh, I really can't answer that. What about you? You, you can't answer it? All right, I'm going to show you. In our communities, give me Exodus 20, thou shalt not uh, kill, right? In our communities, who dies the most? We do. At the hands of Caucasian people, and at the hands of black people, and at the hands of, right, we do. Now. Now I'm, gonna show you, now I'm gonna show you the importance of keeping the commandments and the benefit of that and the ultimate destruction that we faced because of that. Right, read this. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. That is a commandment. Remember, we are teaching the laws of God, not religion, but laws. One law that we break constantly in our community is thou shalt not kill. If we kept that commandment, how many mothers would not cry over their sons? How many daughters would not lose their fathers? How many sons wouldn't lose their fathers? How many of us wouldn't be in prison or jail because of murder? Right? The Bible says, read it again. Thou shalt not kill. Right. The Bible says thou shalt not kill. That is the benefit of keeping the, God, uh, the, the commandments of God. Don't kill and your people will prosper. If you do kill, then your neighborhoods are what they are. And everybody can come into your neighborhood and take it over. COVID-19, they killing us though. Who? Yeah. The Bible, look, no, give, no, me that, no, give me no, that in Psalms. What I'm saying, what some, I'm saying is, uh, with, with the you know, COVID-19 right now, they, 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 they make you get a shot how they was trying to make it mandatory. What? They I make got us you. get a shot. They're they trying to kill us though. Watch this though, watch this. That's their job. I'm going to say something, it's controversial. That's their job. They doing right. They supposed to try to kill us because they ain't us and they not gods either. They are called the devil according to the Bible. That's what the devil does. However, the Israelites, which is what me and you are, the children of God, we are not to be murdering each other. The devil, that's his job to try to kill us. And the only way he succeeds is if we allow him by sinning uh, against the Most High. Read this and then we're going to show him that. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes, and his judgments unto Israel. So the commandments he gave to the children of Israel, he did not give this to everybody. Not everybody. This Bible is not for everybody. Though everybody calls himself a Christian, though everybody swears they love Jesus, this Bible is only for one race of people on the planet. God made 18 and said out of 18 nations, this one I'm going to give all of my wisdom and understanding and make them gods upon earth. You understand? So the, those people were given laws to, to deal with. Everybody else is just, well, whatever. If y'all want to look up and worship the moon and the sun and clouds, y'all can do that. These people are to worship me and me alone because they are my sons and my daughters. Read it. He showeth his word unto Jacob. You listening, brother? His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. He hasn't dealt with every other race of people. Read and for his judgments and their penalties or the problems that come with breaking the laws they have not known them this is why you can see a, a caucasian man or asian man embezzle millions of dollars and go to jail for three months and get out but you sell a, a, a 10 pack of weed or or something and you go on for some years that's that's because when you break the commandments of god you get judged you get a big massive whooping from your father they, they judgment is on the end for what they did to us. You make sense? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.